Thank you again. This time you can see not only me, but also the presentation. So I would like to speak about the options a nuclear power can offer for space uh, exploration. So anyway, uh, for any application, we need reliable power sources. So most of those applications we can deal with uh, say solar power, but there are some, ex uh, some exceptions like uh, applications in deep, deep space like this Voyager probe or applications on the surface when you need uh, power sources uh, working uh, during also during the night. So what are the options from nuclear power? There are generally two branches. Um, you can use uh, radio isotope generators. So these radio isotopes, there is an, here's an example of uh, one of those generators used by uh, NASA, which was left on the moon surface. It's uh, SNAP-27, and this radio isotope generator, it uses uh, plutonium, decay of plutonium producing alpha particles, and in this way heat, and this heat can be converted uh, to electricity. So for example, in this, uh, in this example, uh, this radio isotope generator generated uh, 1,250 uh, watts of heat and 75 watts of electricity for powering those experiments. The latest generation of these uh, radio isotope generators is used on the Mars rover Perseverance, currently on, on Mars. Uh, it um, produces heat and electricity for the, for the applications. Uh, it is uh, it's charging bat batteries for operation that requires uh, higher electricity output than the generator is able to produce. And the total weight of this, uh, of this assembly, of this power assembly, it's about 45 uh, kilograms. What, what, what are the troubles with these radioisotope generators? Uh, it's the production of plutonium. Plutonium, it's uh, not, or say for these applications, plutonium is not produced in nuclear reactors uh, from the spent fuel. It must be produced by radiation of neptunium in nuclear reactors. But there is a problem with efficiency of this uh, of this generation because it is uh, limited by some, let's say, other unwanted reactions like fission reactions on neptunium-238 and even plutonium-238. So there is still room for improvements. And generally there is a, there is a shortage of this plutonium-238. Uh, there is not enough production in the United States for, let's say, future missions. So they are, right now they are ramping up the production of plutonium in new reactors and uh, essentially the, the, this is schematic this way how to produce plutonium it, re it requires let's say short period of high flux irradiation followed by decay of this neptunium 238 to plutonium uh, 238 there is a uh, research in this field so first of all it's, a, it's the optimization of this process so you can they work on continuous removal of the of the produced uh, plutonium or neptunium 238 uh, from this irradiated sample you can try to shape the neutron energies producing this plut uh, neptunium 238 in order to maximize uh, the yield of plutonium 238 and also you can do the research in use of alternative radio radioisotopes this is the direction of also of this european space agency which aims on usage of uh, americium-241 as the source of heat and electricity for these radio, uh, radio isotope gen generators. There are also other options. Each of those alternatives have some drawbacks. All of them have, uh, let's say, lower heat production, and they are usually uh, producing, uh, let's say, more, let's say, unwanted radiation. So there is this research, how to, how to use these alternative materials, which can be produced in a spent fuel of nuclear, uh, nuclear reactors, and how to avoid, uh, let's say, those unfavorable characteristics. In case you need, uh, let's say, higher uh, power output, and also for those missions on uh, Moon and Mars, it is, uh, it is, it is planned and it is inevitable to use uh, nuclear reactors. This was the... Let's say the primary source of electricity for missions uh, sent by uh, Russia because they used electronics with higher uh, energy consumption. So they were not able to use those radioisotope generators. They had to use uh, nuclear reactors. So they sent more than f uh, 30 of these reactors uh, during their, their missions in contrast to just one uh, sent by, uh, sent by uh, NASA. These nuclear reactors, they are able to produce much more electricity and, and heat. 
uh, when we are speaking about, let's say, kilowatts of heat for those radioisotope generators, now we can speak about say, hundreds of, of kilowatts or even, even megawatts uh, of heat and then electricity. These reactors were using high enriched uranium, which is uh, quite rare and expensive. So there is, a, again, uh, potential for research. Right now, uh, NASA is, uh, let's say, choosing or, uh, among several designs of those, uh, these reactors for future missions. So there, there is a room for, for research, uh, how to transit, for, say, from high enriched ura uranium to low enriched uranium, how to use the exper experience accumulated with uh, this low enriched uranium fuels how to improve economy of neutrons. Uh, we have uh, currently new ways how those light water reactors are uh, evolving. So we can use uh, high SA uranium fuels, high density uranium fuels to, pro to, to provide more fuel for uh, longer periods. We need to say, optimize the design of uh, controlling the power of neutron, neutron e uh, economy. So there is a, there is a room for uh, improvements. So what are, what are our I'll say, experience in this regard? So we specialize ourselves in the physics of the reactor core. So we deal with neutronics, thermal hydraulics, thermomechanics, fuel performance. So we do, uh, let's say, first of all, let's speak about simulations because I don't think that we would be able to build an experimental reactor here. So uh, we are using uh, detailed neutronic analysis uh, codes like MCMP and Serpent for this neutronics. Uh, we can rely on, let's say, shielding and activation and uh, fuel depletion analysis uh, using the, sc uh, the scale package. We use multiple subchannel or CFD codes for thermal hydraulics. And we can do fuel performance uh, calculations use using also those uh, recent codes like uh, FRAPCON or tra TRANSURANUS. All of these codes can be, let's say, combined together to uh, do, let's say, complex uh, analysis of the whole fuel cycle. So you can, pr for example, propagate uncertainties from radiation of those neptunium targets to production of this uh, plutonium-238 for those space missions. In addition to the simulations, we operate a training reactor VR1. So we have the source of uh, neutrons and gamma radiation for our experiments. We also have other uh, types of sources like uh, deuterium, deuterium, and deuterium tritium gener generators. Uh, we are building new subcritical reactor VR2 with uh, fuel pins, so we can gen we can we can even assemble uh, experimental experimental devices or ex uh, experimental setups with. Uh, Various types, uh, various types of fuels. We have a um, good collaboration for the, with UJP, which is uh, formerly uh, which is Institute, which is uh, researching nuclear fuels. We are testing nuclear fuels uh, in severe and severe conditions. We also did some pr uh, past testing of, uh, let's say, electronics in radiation field. So, give you some, let's say, fancy, fancy figures. So, here are some examples of. Uh, dose rate analysis around uh, our, let's say, future VR2 reactor. On the left-hand side, there is a neutron dose rate around the reactor. So the, f uh, let's say, this, uh, this part, it's the, it's the shielding. So you can see how radiation, neutron radiation, is able to escape the shielding and what are the doses around. On the right-hand side, there is uh, gamma radiation generated by uh, reactions with neutrons. The same thing from the this was a vertical direction, so how we can design and analyze the shielding. And uh, one uh, figure related to this uh, space research, this was a, or this is a neutronic model of uh, one of those, um, let's say, experimental reactors uh, NASA were uh, investigating, uh, which is uh, from, from this, uh, this, uh, this crusty reactor. And apart from other analysis, which are not so nice, so here are some fancy figures showing uh, distribution of thermal neutron flux and fast neutron flux around the core of this, of this reactor. So these are the, let's say, those directions which are uh, related to nuclear power in which we would be interested to, let's say, explore in this, uh, in this kind of project. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>